Hey guys, Garage here. And just a few months ago, I was reviewing the excellent GD400BN Pulsar generator. It's a dual fuel, really compact, lightweight generator. And then out of the blue, they released another one from a different contract manufacturer. Didn't even see it coming. I got to say, Pulsar's marketing sucks because it doesn't even describe what this thing has feature-wise. It's on parity power-wise with the other generator. It's a very powerful generator for its size. But all the things I wanted in the other one, this one's got, plus it has more. Let's start off with, it has a bigger gas tank, over, over double the gas tank. Now, I'm running propane, so that doesn't matter to me, but it does have double the uh, fuel capacity. It's got a pop-out handle, you can see it down here, and wheels in the back. So maybe if you got bad knees or a bad back, you can pop it out, you can roll it. I was complaining about the twist lock on the other one, the 30 amp antiquated twist lock. This one has a TT30R receptacle, that's awesome. The other one I complained about, it didn't really have true 20 amp, 120 volts um, receptacles on it. This one does. Um, it adds USB on the front of it and USB Type-C. I don't think I'll ever charge a phone directly off a generator, but it has that. Um, I was saying I really wish it had an hour meter and be able to see the power output and stuff like that. And this one has it. Now, this is another marketing fail. Check out my Vanna White there. Um, this is another marketing fail on Pulsar's part. Nowhere in the literature, nowhere in the little video that I found on this, like nowhere anywhere describes it having an actual digital readout on it. That's actually a really important thing. And they don't even talk about it or in, like I said, in their product video, they don't even show it illuminated, which is totally bizarre, but it's there. So again, huge fail on their marketing. Um, yeah, so let's dive into this. We're going to go through all of the same things I normally do with the generator. We're going to do our first oil change, any recommended parts. Do check the video description, and any parts that I use on this are going to be in that video description. There's going to be links. You can just buy them from there. That helps me out. I'm just saying. Um, yeah, so let's get on this. And to start out with, we're going to do a teardown. So I am going to completely take this thing apart. We're going to look at, try to find out who made this generator. Um, who the contract manufacturer was and take a look at the internals and see how it's built just i don't know for fun because i'm i like stuff like that so anyways here we go all right so unboxing videos watching me slowly take it out is really annoying so just like that movie magic she's unboxed and this is what you get you get 21 ounces of oil which i feel is a little bit light for this generator it actually can use some more you get your propane regulator you get a spark plug wrench you get a uh, phillips and flathead screwdriver that inserts into this handle you get an allen key which i haven't figured out what it's for you get um this guy right here it's a little bag to carry these little zinc plated tools and that just about went away. And you get a whole bunch of hose clamps. And I have no idea what those are for either. Didn't find them in the manual. I don't need them for anything. So I'm not sure why they gave me extra hose clamps. But that's it. There she is. All right, so we have blown this thing completely apart and uh, did unplug everything, but uh, let's just go through a few things just really slowly. Now, one thing I still have some concern about, I'm going to do some research, see if I can actually fix it. Um, Amperage is not displaying on this particular screen, and I believe it should be. It's not. It says it does current in the manual. And there is one particular screen that I just get zeros on, and it's under A on the menu. So I believe that's amperage. It's not spitting it out. So I don't know if there's an inductive clamp or something in here that I got to find. But uh, that's kind of the back side of the panel. Nothing really out of the ordinary looking in there. Um, big inverter. I think it has some really big capacitors in there. 
The carburetor is a Yinba. Let's look at the inverter part number. It's a 3.2 kilowatt inverter. There's the part number for it. Pretty common brand. Now the engine assembly, and maybe the whole generator. I don't know if the, um, this company was a contract manufacturer. I have not seen this layout in this exact setup before. Um, usually you can find like four or five brands of generator that all look about the same and you can tell who the contract manufacturer is. This one is actually made by a company called Shine Ray. This, this actual generating assembly. Now, I don't know if they built the rest of it, but this is a Shine Ray. Um, one I haven't worked with before. It's got a really interesting spark plug wire, very well shielded. Used a very large spark plug. We'll get into that in a minute. I did pull the valve covers and thankfully our valve clearances are in the manual. So the manual is actually pretty well written. The other GD version, I had to show you guys what the valve clearances were. But, uh, okay, so we got 0.04 to 0.06 millimeter on your intake and 0.06 to 0.08. I think I may have found the rough idle problem with this is <laughs> valve lash is too tight from the factory and you do not want it too tight brand new. That is not a good thing. Um, so I'm going to adjust the valve lash on this. I just have a little set of feeler gauges. We got to get it to top dead center on intake and exhaust. So this is going to be your exhaust. This is going to be your intake. And we have to adjust those out so I can get those little feeler gauges in there. And um, hopefully this is just a one-off an issue pre-production or early production. But uh, definitely too tight. I, I used a uh, .04. I couldn't get it in between the intake no matter what I did. And I used a .06 in the exhaust. I could not get it between, between there. It's just literally too tight. It's almost right up against there. So we're going to see if we can just work on that. The only janky thing I found on this generator so far was this. They have a bullet connector shoved into a spade. And I think this is the coil trigger. Which, that wasn't impressive. I may cut that off and just do a dedicated spade. Because it's not... I mean, it fits tight, probably not going to have a problem, but you can see the bullet just shoved in there um, and part of the spade. That was a little bit of a, what are you doing? It's kind of lame. There you go. You can see shine ray in there. When I pulled the gasket, it did rip a little bit on this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and grease this up just like I always do. And just to make sure that will always come off. There's no oil pressure or a lot of oil in there in your, in these, uh, assembly so there's nothing really to worry about the air filter is a really good air filter it's two-stage so you got a foam pre-filter and then you have another filter inside here so it's actually a really good air filter setup but overall i mean it is what it is to generator Let's see if we can get that part number maybe that helps somebody someday All right, so checking out the manual. This guy wants 21 fluid ounces of oil. And it comes with exactly 21 fluid ounces of oil. Now, of course, like all my videos in any small engine, we are going to do a magnetic dipstick. This is a little bit fun to get in because it's so stiff. This is so much better made that it kind of it's kind of weird to put in all right let's go ahead and drop 21 ounces this breaking oil definitely breaking oil I don't want to leave this in for a long time I hear a lot of my viewers tell me oh I've had the break-in oil in for 10 hours or something don't do that you need to change your oil really quickly on a brand new engine This looks more like 1030. Let me read the bottle. I didn't do that. This doesn't look like the break-in oil that came with the other one. The other was a lot more clear. This seems to be more like conventional oil. Oh my 
got here? Oh, it is 10W30. The other one may have been, but this one just seems a lot more yellow. Uh, more like a traditional oil than the other one for the break-in oil. Alright. I mean, downside of these funnels is they hold oil in all the ridges, so when you take the thing out, they do kind of drip a little bit, so... Take this out. All right. I'm gonna grab a little. Actually, no. I can just do it this way. Okay. Oil's definitely on the dipstick, so we're in the good range. Now the oil change on this is going to be the same thing. I'm going to put the funnel in. I'm just going to tip this generator all the way on its side and let it run out in a container. And of course, I always do it with the engine and the oil hot. The oil is very, very uh, low viscosity. Basically, it's almost water when it's super hot. So any contaminants will run out with it. And uh, all right, so we got oil in it. We're actually ready for our first start. So I'm going to go grab a propane tank. I don't plan to run this on um, gasoline. Other than just a test, this is primarily going to be a propane generator. But let me go grab a propane tank. We're going to get this hooked up and uh, take it for its first start. All right, so this is a true first start. I've never even hooked this thing up before. Let's see what happens. We're going to hook up our propane tank. What I've learned on any, any uh, propane generator... You don't want to tighten this fitting all the way and just crank it on and expect it to start. It's just not going to happen. So we're going to get it snug like that. We're going to pop on our propane tank and then we're going to let this bleed for a few seconds here. Got to get all the uh, air out of the line. I'm going to go ahead and put it to, let's see, the auto idle off. We're going to put that to uh, ch uh, start, choke, and see what happens. Let's try putting this just on run and see if it does any better. sputtering and kind of kicking a little bit. I don't think anything too too concerning. I'm just gonna let this thing kind of run and warm up a little bit. And let's see how it runs. I'll be back. Alright so here's where I'm at. So I'm about 0.2 hours and um, you can hear it. It's still idling pretty janky. And but if I give it any kind of a load, if I give it say a 25% load or maybe a 40-ish percent load uh, like with this heat gun I got plugged in, it runs really, really well. And it starts super, super easy. Um, I checked the spark plug, nothing there. Everything seems to be running properly. It just, again, it just runs really poor idle on propane right now. Uh, I will give gas a try, no doubt. But for example, if I give it a load, that's about a, that's about a 40% load. It's running really, really nice. Exactly where I'd expect it. I give it, say, like a 25% load. Still runs really, really good. But I take the load off, and it misses a lot. Kind of interesting. Again, we go 25%. Really, really nice. 
There's about 40%. Now the gauge on this, the meter is pretty cool. You actually have a little bar. It doesn't tell you the wattage, but you have a bar right here. About 25% load. There's a 40% load, so that's your output. Now below that, I don't have any fuel in it. There's actually a fuel gauge on this, which is even more impressive at this price point. So you get a digital fuel gauge. I don't know how accurate it is. Got to put fuel in it, but it's there. But that's where we're at. I'm going to let this thing break in for an hour. We're going to do an oil change at one hour. There we go. I just tipped over 0.3 hours. We're going to let it go for one hour and um, dump the oil out, check a few things out, probably change out the spark plug. With all my small equipment, I'll go to an Iridium spark plug and um, probably add a magnetic dipstick. And that's about all the mods that are needed on this. It's got everything else built in, which is amazing. I just wish the idle was better. Such and such a crappy idle. Throw some load on it. Very nice under load. Alright, so we got one hour on this generator. So let's knock out our first oil change. Now, while it was running, I did stop it. Excuse me, I'm walking around the shop. While it was running, I did stop it, and I did throw in a magnetic dipstick. Just, uh, you know, it's a brand new generator. The first run is actually most likely to have metal shaving, so I wanted to go ahead and get one installed. Check the video description for links for all this, all the parts that I use, like this magnetic dipstick. Whew, hot. All right, well, you can see it, about like I expected. Definitely have some material on there. That's completely normal for a first break-in for a small engine. Nothing uh, too crazy, other than just being hot, 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 hot. Take our funnel. Okay. Hopefully this generator, or hopefully this container, I mean. Uh, Ooh, I'm leaking. Yeah. Seal wasn't sealing too good on this. Yeah, it's still leaking. That is some really hot oil. Quick trip to the ER if I spilled it on myself. That's a whole lot better looking than the Din King version uh, that Pulsar sells, the other smaller generator that I just reviewed recently. First oil change looks a lot better. Let me grab another container. Finish this off. Around here, got some uh, rotella. I'm just going to refill the stock little pulsar oil bottle. All right, so I just refilled that up. Don't know if you can see it on camera, but I was just filling. Filling this back up. I think I definitely put a little more than the 21 ounces in here. That's all right because I think it was a little low.
all my generators get run pretty hard, especially in the summertime here in Arizona. So this is Rotella 15W40. This is an HDEO. It's like a diesel oil, really good detergents, keeps engines really clean. It's a really good oil. I use it in everything I'm not supposed to use it in, pretty much. Either 540 or 1540. Just works. Alright. In the dipstick, um, nothing out of the ordinary on the magnetic dipstick. It's fine. It's fine. Now, I did overfill that oil bottle a little bit. And it didn't overfill the gin, which is good. So you can maybe take a little bit more than that 21 ounces. And that, that is it for the oil change. It's really that simple on these. Love it. Let's take a look at this oil. Just a hint of stripper dust in there. Not much. You can kind of see it. Not nearly as black as the uh, Din King generator when it first came out. Um, for its first oil change, that stuff was really cooked. But again, this was like a 1030. I don't know what that other oil was. Um, I wonder if I sell the bottle for that. But uh, that stuff was a lot more clear. It was more like a mineral oil, breaking oil or something. But it was it came out almost black, black gray. Um, take a look at this picture and you can see the comparison. But uh, this looks like about the second oil change on that generator. But this is the first oil change. So, not bad. So I thought I'd show this off really quick. So this is the much loved GD400BN super compact dual fuel generator that I've recently reviewed, did a lot of modifications on, not a lot, just a little bit. And that is the new GX400BN. Um, again, those aren't from the same contract manufacturer. They're definitely different. And um, size wise, the new one is quite a bit bigger. One of the main reasons this guy is so much bigger is the gas tank is about double the size of the GD. So it's got a much larger fuel tank. If you run on propane all the time, does that even matter? Because I, I don't use fuel at all. I'm just gonna run off propane. So to me, the size is a huge advantage on this. Um, but again, this has all the features that I was asking for. It's got the proper RV style plug. It's got newer style plug, not a twist lock. It's got an output meter. It has a fuel gauge if you have, uh, if you're running off gasoline, so it gives you a fuel gauge. It gives you an output meter. I mean, it's got all the cool bells and whistles. Um, and it has wheels to roll on, which definitely is nicer, but not required, especially for this weight. But take it back. Some people um, may have bad backs, knees, whatever. I get it. The wheels might be a huge bonus. Let's take a look, just walk around, kind of the size difference between these. Like I said, definitely, definitely larger. Length, they're virtually the same. Width, it's a little bit wider on the new one. It looks a lot wider than it actually is. It's kind of weird. It's, I think it's the shape of this one with the kind of the slanted um, sides. It's kind of a little bit deceiving, but this one is just a tad wider. Again, weight on this, if I pick them both up at the same time, it's really negligible. It's hard to tell the difference between them. It's really hard to beat that GD, the one I originally reviewed, for its size. The thing is just so compact. But if you're running on gasoline a lot, having double the fuel capacity can be a pretty big thing. It can be pretty important. So besides the slight misfire, the really ratty sound in the engine, I figured it out. It's actually the wheels in the back. The wheels are really loose and vibrate. Uh, Maybe able to use some washers and trim those. But if I can kind of hear it, I actually thought it was the bottom end of the engine at first. My God, it sounds like the bearings going out on the on the crank. But if I take take the weight off, or I, I put weight, sorry, on the wheels, you notice that real nasty ratty sound is gone but the 
second I, I take weight off the wheels. And it turns out these wheels, they just have a couple washers and they're really not shimmed up tight enough. And when these are in here, the way they are, they have a couple washers and there's a cotter pin that holds it into this chassis. Well, these things are just chattering like nobody's business. Like it is so bad, the chatter, that it actually sounds like the bottom end is coming apart. Now, can they actually be installed so that they won't chatter? Yeah, we just have to shim them out just as tight as we can get them and let the bearing, like if I'm pushing on this hard, the bearing is still going to spin. So we want to get those shimmed up. I'm going to have to fix that. I can tell you what, Pulsar's got to fix that because that noise is just obnoxious. It really makes it sound janky when it's a really quality product and it's just something so simple as the wheels are, are, are not shimmed out right. For the wheel rattle fix, what I did is I took some M8 washers, and you can see there's a tiny bow in that. I put it in my uh, vise, just barely tapped it with the hammer to give it a little bit of a bow. And the cotter pin was very hard to get back in, which is perfect in my opinion. But I've got, there's no wheel rattle at all. And it's completely smooth, and that fixed the situation as opposed to like what this does chatter wise and how much play is in that. So again, what you're gonna do when you do your little washer trick, these washers are what was on it. Then take your little bowed washer. Washers are directional. So we take the smooth side with the bend in it. I'm gonna put that towards those. And if I can do this one handed, get that in there. Again, you can see that's just barely sticking out the hole. You gotta kind of really push on it hard, get the cotter pin in and tap it. And then the play will be gone out of the wheels and that's gonna eliminate your noise. So that's my fix. Maybe you guys come up with a better one. That's what I did. Again, I just grabbed a little M8 washer, flat washer and uh, that works. All right, so I've got it all back together. Adjusted the valve clearance because that was way, way too tight from the factory. May or may not be the reason why I idled a little bit funky. I just don't know until we fire it up. Um, I am gonna load test it here in just a little bit after it warms up. So we're gonna load test it to full capacity. I didn't find any things sticking out on why current or amperage is not displaying um, on the display. That could be in electronics. I just don't know. Heck, maybe since I took it apart, put it back together, maybe it just works now. I, I really don't know. So let me let it warm up and we'll get to it. All right, so this thing is really, really loud, this generator. So. Uh, definitely, I can tell you right now, it's not going to pass State Park at a 100% output, but around 50%, it just might, just like the other generator. But yeah, this thing is really loud, but again, at 100% output. So right now, I have this thing running. It's rated on propane at 2.8 thousand watts. It's putting out, uh, what we have here, 3.6 thousand watts. And um, it's, it's singing, and we're not on overload. Now, if I add just a tiny, tiny bit more draw, let me add a little bit more. Oh, you see the overload light on. So the overload light came on at 3.7. We back it off back to 3.6. good that's all she's got on propane 3050 watts 3060 watt range again I got a long cord so there's a little bit of resistance there but it's a high quality cord but um, let me go ahead and take the load off of this and you'll see how much quieter it is and you can see our meter on here all the way 100% output 
Definitely runs better. You don't hear the rattle from the wheels. I definitely fix the wheels. That's a pretty easy thing to do. To get to the wheels, all you do is take off the exhaust cover and you can get to the cotter pins to pull the wheels off. And you do have to take these, just this part, the gray plastics off. Easy fix. A quick sanity check. So I'm going to load both of these to 50% then 100% in case my ear calibration is off because I think this new one is significantly louder than that one, but I don't know until I measure. So I'm not going to do the full state park testing. I do know this one was right borderline at about 50% output. Um, so that's kind of our, our gauge at 50%. We'll see how loud they are in comparison and we'll, we'll test each of them at 100%. So I'm just going to take photos of the readings and we'll go from there. All right, so that's why we test, right? So the GX, the new GX, is definitely quieter at 50% load and 100% load. Same output. Um, the GX is quieter than the GD series, the more compact GD. And by a decent amount, I was kind of surprised. I don't think the new GX is going to pass State Park at 100% output, but at 50%, I think it definitely will. Um, both generators put out the exact same power. The new GX, as we talked about, has some really good features to it. It's got an output meter and an hour meter and all that already built into it. Uh, it's got a larger fuel tank if that's important to you. Um, I do like that it has the TT 30 amp uh, R receptacle on it. So that's, that's kind of a bonus. But um, I do have to knock this generator just a little bit, this new one. So the wheel rattle, that was absolutely obnoxious on this generator. I mean, it, it just... If you heard it in person, it was even worse in person, but I fixed it. But uh, I still, that was just something I had to do that you shouldn't have to do. Harbor Freight with the Predator 3500 at the first gen. Same problem. They had a front lock that just rattled like crazy. Everybody had to fix that. Now, the other thing on this guy um, that I had to fix was valve lash. Valve lash was too tight from the factory, period. You don't want it too tight from the factory. In fact, you want it on the loose spec from the factory because over time, that's going to tighten up. So that was a bummer. Third ding on this guy is the meter. I mean, the feature that I really wanted was that digital meter on there that gives you fuel level. It gives you um, the output and wattage. It gives you the frequency. It gives you the voltage. It's supposed to give you amperage, current, and I could not ever get the amperage to work. So there is a defect there. We're going to be testing Pulsar's customer service. We're going to see what they what they have to say about that. See if they can get it resolved for me. I'll put that in the comments below if they do end up fixing it or when they end up fixing it. But that's just a fact on there. The, it just didn't work perfectly out of the box. And the rattle and the valve lash, those were all negatives. This little guy did not have that problem, uh, the GD series. And again, if you bought this, you're not missing a whole lot. This is a fantastic generator. But... Um, if we get the hour meter working on this or the amperage meter working on this guy, the GX series, I think I might lean towards keeping it after I fix the wheels. And the main thing is it's just got a little bit more tech to it. I like that. And, uh, but I don't know. I'm still, it's a toss up. I could go back to the GD series. I'm glad I own both. Uh, so yeah, I appreciate you watching and uh, do check the links. I've got some product in there that may help you out with your generators, but uh, do check the links below and I will catch you later. I really appreciate you watching. I hope this helped you out and I hope you can make an easier decision than I have to make on which one I'm going to keep. Catch you later.